this one, Sienna. One day, let's go. John, my folks, my name is Jess. I'll be your safari guide out here in the Harambe Wildlife Reserve this morning. Take a look right above your head to the animal spotting guide. I'm going to give you an idea of some of the animals you might be seeing out there. You won't get a chance to see everything. We usually have some pretty good luck. So if you plan on taking photos out there, have your cameras ready. Sports or action setting would be best. I think with a higher shutter speed, since I can't stop for all of the animals. It's very important to remain seated while we're out here. Keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the vehicle at all times. For your safety, also for the safety of these animals, as we are entering into their homes, beginning with the Aturi Forest. Now, forest animals are often shy and reclusive, relying on their camouflage, their ability to hide. It's your main line of defense, so you have to keep your eyes wide open. These animals that blend in with their natural habitat. So we're looking for antelope. They like to hide behind trees, bushes. I see some antelope up ahead on the next hill. You're gonna have to look very carefully. Two different types of antelope. Now the reddish brown ones are called bongos. Bongos are called ghosts of the forest. They're very rarely seen out in the wild. There's some tan colored antelope up there up top of the hill called the Greater Kudu, Africa's second tallest antelope. Kind of look like deer. Right up here, no horns means that they're females. Males have horns that spiral out like a staircase. All right, left hand side, here's a black rhino. Anywhere between a thousand to three thousand pounds, black rhinos have a pointy upper lip that allows them to strip bark off of trees, pick up sticks and leaves off the ground. Pretty diverse diet. Unfortunately, though, incredibly endangered, less than five thousand black rhinos are left in the entire world because of poaching or being poached for their horns. Now back to the right side. Now you can see the bongos. Look real carefully. There's a baby up there. It doesn't have any horns yet. But it will. Bongos, both males and females, have those horns that grow out, leaning back. Helps them to get through all the thick underbrush without getting caught. It's the last one up there. It's eating. Only found in rainforests with thick undergrowth. It's going to be bumpy here as we leave the forest behind. We're going to head on over to another ecosystem known as the Safi River. Very similar is what you find in the entrance of the Nile River. So we're going for Nile animals such as hippos. Now hippos often look like big rocks in the water. They spend most of their time in the water as protection from the sun. They will come up in the evenings to eat nearly a hundred pounds of grass and any other vegetation they can find out in the wild. Very carefully, we're looking for eyes, ears, noses sticking up out of the water. Right uh, here, I can't stop up here. We'll try to find some more. They can hold their breath up to eight minutes at a time. Fully grown hippo can tip the scales at 6,000 pounds. Here we go, left hand side, a whole group of hippos called a bloat. Communicating with each other with a sound called a wheeze honk. A wheezing and honking can be heard up to five miles away, just like a lion's roar. So if they need to eat 100 pounds of food every night, they can get pretty far from each other. So the more dominant the hippo, the more respond to that wheeze honk. Pinkback pelicans, look there on the island. They get their name from their backs turning pink during mating season. They eat primarily aquatic life. Hippos are territorial, they don't like sharing their water. They don't like animals larger than a bird coming and drinking out of their water, but they do share the Nile River with crocodiles. The guy here on the left, remember, they seated jaws that can crush down 2,000 pounds per square inch. 14 feet long, weighing 1,600 pounds. These predators can hide in just one foot of murky water. They're reptiles, so they only eat once every week. Cooler weather, they only eat once a month, but Nile crocodiles actually have the ability to go almost a year without eating if they really had to. Mother crocodiles lay 40 eggs at a time, but those hatchlings have a 2% chance of survival up to that first year. If they make it to their first birthday, they're more likely going to grow up, and that means about 45 years old in the wild. 
Growing up in human care though, Nile crocodiles can reach 75 to 100 years old. All right, it's time to head on into the savannah, also known as the Serengeti grasslands. It stretches out for hundreds of miles across Africa. Every animal has an important role to play in this ecosystem. Elephants knock down trees for food. Well, that gives room for more growth. Cattle and antelope grazing on the grass, giraffes trimming the underside of the trees, termites working as the cleanup crew, even the predators are very important. If there were no predators, there'd be an overabundance of animals eating all the plant life, in which case there wouldn't be anything green left. So it truly is a circle of life out here on the savannah. Now up ahead, a small herd of Ancoli cattle, or Watusi cattle massive horns and those horns have a honeycomb like structure in them with their blood vessels and sinuses their blood circulates through their horns and that works to cool them down they're the only domesticated animals of africa especially important to the maasai people they're used as symbols of wealth so if you belong to that tribe even still today people will judge how wealthy you are based on how many ankoli cows that you have We're going to go up here around the cave, up to the left. We're going to look for Africa's most successful predator. The success rate of 90% African wild dogs, also called painted dogs. They hunt together in a pack. I'm going to pause on the other side. The bush is a little bit shorter, so it's easier to see. They hunt together in a pack. They run their prey to exhaustion. They've got incredible stamina. Now, unlike other dogs and wolves, they only have four toes on each foot. They cannot be domesticated. Bushy tail is kind of like a fox, a very strong community. They have to rely on each other for their teamwork and hunting. Some sable antelope out here on the left. Long horns leaning back like that helps to deter predators from jumping on their backs. They're very courageous animals. They always defend their territory. No matter who they're up against, they'll even stand against lions. They'll lean on their knees, bear their horns out. So they can look more intimidating. Closer look at the termite mounds. I mentioned they're the cleanup crew. So these mounds made of termite saliva, dung, and dirt big as hard as concrete out in the right African here. sun. In the wild, the elephants will use the taller mounds as scratching posts, break them down smaller, and the antelope will climb on them, looking out for nearby predators, maybe hiding in the tall grass. Animals of the savannah have to be especially careful during the night. And that's when a lot of the predators wake up to do their hunting. But they also use that cover of darkness as a protection. A lot of the hoofstock animals, such as the Ancoli cattle, are born during the night, so they have extra time to clean and nurse their young. These animals have to rely on their speed, their agility, their ability to outsmart their predators, as well as safety in numbers. A lot of these animals are able to identify the alarm calls of other species, help warn them of nearby danger. If you look across the way, we're coming up on some springbok. Those are fully grown antelope, only two or three feet tall. One of the fastest land animals that can run up to 60 miles an hour. The only animal in Africa that can outrun those in springbok are the cheetahs. So hopefully we'll get a chance to see a cheetah later on. Now springbok can jump eight feet high, leaping 13 feet forward in an action called pronking. They are the national animal of South Africa. They're used as the mascot for a lot of sports teams because of how fast they are. We're also coming up on some wildebeest. Now wildebeest are always on the lookout for predators. They eat and sleep in shifts. Even when they're resting, they'll lie down in rows so they have room to get up and start stampeding. 
Baby wildebeest within 15 minutes of being born have to be up and running with the herd and they might get left behind. <laughs> a little family of Patterson's Elands up here. One that's much larger, kind of a gray color as a male. Right beside him are two young Elands. You can tell by their horns. They're getting pretty big now. There's a female right behind them. Africa's largest antelope weighing up to 2,000 pounds. They can leap eight feet forward just from a standing position. Let's go take a look, closer look at this giraffe up ahead. I want you to see if you can spot its tongue. They've got a prehensile tongue. That means they can wrap their tongue around a leaf or a branch and pull that food down into their mouth. Their tongues are a dark color that protects them from getting sunburnt because giraffes eat 20 hours a day, consuming 75 pounds of leaves. They only sleep for 30 minutes in a 24 hour period. The younger giraffes out there as well. They're born at six feet tall, about 150 pounds. It takes them only an hour to learn how to walk. The pattern of patches on their coats are unique to each giraffe, just like our fingerprints. They'll be lighter or darker based on genetics, but their patches are filled with capillaries that allows them to regulate their body temperature. All right, it's time to head on over to elephant country. We are going to look for elephants on the right, monkeys on the left called mandrels. If you spot one, you'll notice they've got a red and blue face. They were the inspiration for Rafiki. I see some elephants up ahead. A fully grown African elephant can weigh up to 12,000 pounds, making them the heaviest of all land animals. There's some monkeys up here at the bottom of the trees. Males are 100 pounds, females are only 30 pounds, and babies are even smaller. Let's go get a closer look at these elephants. Now, elephants live in matriarchal societies, meaning the females live together for generations. Their herd never stops growing. But the males that are born into the herd uh, get kicked out of that herd. Once they hit their teen years, they get too aggressive. So they hang out by themselves or form loose bachelor groups such as this. Sources to do many different things, both male and female African elephants have those tusks. If you look up here on both sides, you can see marks here on the clay. Elephants will scrape that clay off and eat it. That contains some important minerals for their diet. So we look out here on the left, see if we can find the herd. I see one up here. Try to get a little bit closer. Elephants will flap their ears to cool themselves down. That can bring down their body temperature as much as 15 degrees cooler. And they throw dirt and mud on their backs that protects their sensitive skin from sunburn, as well as insect bites. Now, mother elephants are pregnant for 22 months. That is almost two years before they give birth to a 300 pound baby. So look all the way out here on the left, so you can spot baby elephant. It's there on top of the pile of dirt. There it is. They grow very fast, reaching a thousand pounds before their first birthday. When they're first born, they don't know how to use their trunks. Drinking water, picking up things like sticks and leaves is not instinctive. They have to learn that from their mother, so that takes them about a year to figure out what they can and can't do with their trunks. Now these strange looking trees we're driving by, these are baobab trees or upside down trees. Also known as trees of life since they hold thousands of gallons of water inside the trunk have learned that they can poke holes into the bark to access the water. Especially elephants, they'll use their tusks or any animals with horns, poke the holes and let that water drip out so they can get a drink. So the animals have learned that they can look for 
and depend on these trees during the drought seasons in Africa. Up ahead, the islands in Greater Flamingo. They are the lightest pink of all flamingo, getting that pink coloring from the beta carotene in the brine shrimp of their diet. Babies are born gray, gradually turning white after they wean from their parents is when they start turning pink. So look over here on the end, here's a younger flamingo. It's still got some black on its legs and its neck. Because it takes them a whole year to turn pink. It's only about 10 months old. As we continue on with the savanna, mud pit up ahead is a good indicator of white rhino in the area. Oh, here they are. They like playing in the mud, that cools them down, gets rid of ectoparasites. You notice they move their ears a lot, they've got very poor eyesight. Unless you're within 100 feet to the side or 8 feet directly in front of a white rhino, they can't really detect your motion with their eyes, so they have to rely on their hearing. Now white rhinos get their name from the Afrikaans word vite, meaning wide. That refers to their jaw, they've got wide jaws for grazing grass out in the savannas. The word just got lost in translation over time. There's another one all the way out there on the right. Northern white rhinos are extinct in the wild. Southern white rhinos like these are endangered. Being poached for their horns, just like we talked about with the black rhino, made of keratin, just like our fingernails. Now we're driving by cheetah territory, so you can look out there on the left, see if you can spot one. Fastest land animal going from zero to 60 in just three seconds. They're the only cat, not an attractable claws, and the only large cat that can purr. House cat. Get a black teardrop right below their eyes. That helps to draw the glare of the sun away because they're daytime hunters. Check out that male lion sleeping or er, sitting there on top of the rock. His mane's gonna turn darker as he gets older. Eventually, it'll turn black. So we'll drive all the way around so we can get a chance to see his face. Right now, he can see just as well as we do. Once the sun goes down, though, his night vision six times better than ours. Treads on the bottom of their paws that helps them with their balance, as well as staying silent. There's a lioness up here. Zebras, ostriches up ahead. Lionesses are the ones that do the majority of the hunting, though, from the males protect the territory. We'll catch up with the zebras on the other side. Lions have rigorous appetites. Seconds after they've engorged themselves, they're able to start eating again. a lion nest all the way on top as far up as you can go. Wow. Oh yeah, I see. Alright, so burrows up here is a little family of warthogs. Piglets, they're getting bigger. There's still piglets. It's one, two, three, four of them. About six months old. Now uh, they get their name from all the warts on their faces, although just the males have those warts, not the females. Very territorial animals, so you wouldn't want to come across them out in the wild. Grabby zebras up ahead. Or grand zebras. Oh, this species, a, the stripes go all the way around the belly, all the way down the legs. Yeah. Powerful hind legs, enough to break the jaw of an attacking lion. A whole herd of zebras running together confuses their predators because it messes with their depth perception. It's hard for them to single out a zebra, so as long as they stay together in herds, they're much safer than they're running out by themselves. There's more white rhinos. There's an ostrich up ahead. Largest bird cannot fly, but can run up to 45 miles an hour. 
pop out their wings, change their direction very quickly. This is a female, you can tell for the color, males are black. The eggs that they lay are very strong, they weigh three pounds each. It's the same as two dozen chicken eggs per ostrich egg. They're so strong that a grown man can stand on top of their eggs without breaking. But we are officially leaving the savannah behind. We are going to drive through Magadi Glen so you can find any other animal. Oh, real quick. Out to the right, those are water buck antelope. They like to hide, as you can tell. Shaggy coats secrete an oil that helps to waterproof them because they'll run into swamps to get rid of their predators. All right, now we're heading into Magadi Glen. We can find anything else before we finish up our journey here in the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. Ooh, up here on the hill, this is a scimitar horned oryx. Found in the Sahara Desert, the oryx can go up to nine months without drinking any water simply because their body temperature reaches 115 degrees before they even begin to sweat. On the right, a couple of yellow-billed storks are carnivorous birds. They eat fish, snakes, lizards, frogs, bugs, worms, other small birds, rodents, pretty much anything they can fit down their little beaks, they will eat it. Gonna be bumpy here as we head back to the village of Harambe. If you'd like to see some more African animals, go check out the Gorilla Falls walking trail. That's where you can go see the western lowland gorillas, colobus monkeys, meerkats, naked mole rats, a hippo pool out there as well. Lots of animals to see. There's another trail over in Asia known as the Maharaja Jungle Track. Recently, one of the Sumatran tigers gave birth to a pair of cubs. If you want to see those baby tigers, head on over to Asia. I would like to ask that you please do remember that a lot of animals, just like the ones we saw out here, they are facing endangerment in the wild. But we can help these animals simply by recycling our paper and electronics. Also by donating to the Disney Conservation Fund, which Disney will match your donation dollar for dollar, penny for penny. By Wilderness Explorers on board page 15 in your handbooks, you've been riding on the Simba 1, S-I-M-B-A, number 1. Once again, my name is Jess. Thanks for joining me out there. I hope you had a good time. But more importantly, hope you learned a little bit more about some of these African animals that you didn't know already. Here in Africa, we'd like to say goodbye. I'm going to leave you with the Swahili word, Kwahiriti, which means go well. With all intentions of coming back and seeing us again sometime soon. Look down and around. Make sure you gathered everything that you brought with you. Wahirini, my new friends, go well, go wild, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day here in Disney's Animal Kingdom. Oh.